Uh, good morning. Hey, good morning, uh, Nicola. Good morning, everyone. And uh, maybe good afternoon, uh, good evening, uh, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, my name is Vasil Petrov, and I'm the um, managing director of Lean Institute Bulgaria. Uh, we're also part of the Lean Global Network. And uh, today uh, we have uh, here Nikola Dimitrov, uh, also from the Bulgarian Institute, uh, that will be uh, talking in two different sessions on, the, on two different topics uh, that will hopefully be interesting for, uh, for some of you. Um, we have um, the topic of uh, the journey of a young link consultant, uh, where Nicole will share a little bit more of what it is to, to entirely change the career in the direction of helping organizations and supporting organizations to grow, uh, coming from a completely different sector in the past, from the financial services. And in the second topic later on, uh, we'll talk about how Link can be applied in the sports. Again, uh, Nicole with his experience in the, uh, in the um, volleyball field. So with that, uh, I'll be passing to you, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you, Vasil. Um, thanks for having me. Um, let me just share some, some background slides um, to keep us on track. And uh, we can get this story going or this short journey. So thank you all for having us. It's a great pleasure. Um, we were here last year just as listeners. This year we get to participate, so it's a great honor. Um, today, I would like to take you through my journey as a young Lean consultant. Um, I recently turned 35 this Saturday, so I, I hope I'm still young. And I would like to share some interesting thoughts and challenges that um, went through my career up until now. Hopefully to help any one of you who are just starting out or maybe share some knowledge for some more um, exper experienced people who might have not uh, faced similar challenges. So a short um, introduction or a short description of who am I um, and how did we get here? Um, I was born with uh, asthma when I was young, so I had to quickly adapt to life. I had to adapt to some difficult situations. And uh, thanks to this, actually, uh, with my parents, we, we moved around the world a little bit. Um, so I managed to change my life three times, meaning I had to restart my life three times, going to different countries. And um, maybe this is one of the things that connects me to, to Lean. It's that um, the adaptability and the need for constant change in order to to survive and to improve our daily lives. I have a, a sports background uh, due to the fact that I come from a sports family. And also um, I have a business background due to the fact that as most young people's mothers, um, our mothers want us to study. So this led me to um, some interesting decisions in life uh, regarding my studies and of course um, later on in the years it would come to, to be that most of the things that happened are also very very common applicable to lean and this is one of the things i would like to share today so about me and i think that's more than enough i've been a consultant now for uh, more than six years and i've been with lean um, for around eight to nine years. I think I'm closing my ninth year right now. So lean is something that is part of my life currently, and it's going to be something that is going to be part of my life for the long run. And I would like to, to tell you a little bit about entrepreneurship and why and how I fell in love with, with change and something called entrepreneurship. I know it's very popular to talk about entrepreneurship, um, but during my studies, I came across this word and it was a really, really interesting word focusing people to to try to be the catalyst in the change of companies from within. Um, so I fell in love with this word during my studies and then started my career um, in different sectors from um, the insurance industry to uh, tourism and real estate. And finally, during 2011, I um, I restarted again, so to say and started in the financing, the banking sector, again, as an internal 
expert um, running some different change pros processes. And a few years later, during 2013, after trying to make a lot of internal changes, um, an interesting project came across. It was called um, Lean Navigators. And I decided to apply. It was a very hard um, task to do. We had to go through seven interviews and seven different stages. Um, and then finally, um, I met Lean. So my first steps with Lean. My first steps with Lean were very interesting. They started during 2013 um, under the supervision of uh, the McKinsey company, with which we worked uh, very tightly for seven months. And I actually got to see what a consultant's life looks like um, from backstage because we were working with uh, the consultants. And this led me to several lean transformations in various departments. Um, I was involved in the transformation of the whole branch network uh, of the bank at that time. I then went into some back office functions, um, a, the HR department is a very interesting story for me because um, at least here in Bulgaria at that time, HR wasn't so advanced that we wouldn't be talking about strategic HR. And I got to see through Lean that um, Lean can be applied everywhere, not only in manufacturing. And this led me to, to a strange pivot in life. Um, I figured out that entrepreneurship is very interesting, but is limiting. When you're within a company, you need to follow some rules, you need to follow some standards, you need to follow um, some priorities of people, and sometimes this limits you. So my, my need or my competitiveness, maybe from sports, led me to, to wanting to get more knowledge, to, to experience more um, different situations, to try to find and, and go through the things that I read in the books about lean manufacturing. And of course, I couldn't do that in the finance sector. And this is probably what led me to consulting. So a couple of years later, um, I actually met uh, Vasil uh, and together we ran, we ran some projects. We got to share some knowledge. Um, we started talking about lean, sharing our lean uh, passion. And we saw that uh, we have some things in common. And I decided to, to turn to consulting. Um, I decided to leave my, my daily job, let's say, my nine to five job. And I decided to try the hard road of consulting with um, various clients, various um, projects, various locations. Um, so why did I turn to consulting and why should anyone turn to consulting? Um, for one, if you want to expand or broaden your knowledge and vision of what Lean is, where it can be applied, you need to go outside of your comfort zone. You need to try new areas. You need to try new cultures. You need to try new industries. Um, also, I found out that you can help much more people as a consultant when you are externally from a company coming in. Um, there is this psychological effect that when you come from the outside and you're a consultant and you're well paid, um, people actually listen to you more. Um, regardless of whether your knowledge is the same or not from uh, being an internal consultant uh, or internal employee. So um, being a consultant, um, being part of the, the Lean Global Network actually um, and part of Lean Institute Bulgaria is something that gives us much more credibility and something that our clients um, are respecting and of course after that will listen to us. So. For me, it's a real honor to be part of this, this huge community. And of course, why you should also turn consulting, although this is um, not so true, um, for more free time and to work with more of various projects. So free time, yes, um, not if the customer needs you. So when you're a consultant, you get to actually plan your own days. You get to plan um, your consulting days with the customers, which means you can be much more flexible. Um, but it does also means that you don't work from nine to five. It means that sometimes you work from nine to nine in the next day um, so that your customer is happy and so that you give um, the added value that they expect from you. So um, I would like to share some 
challenges that I've I've gone through over the past uh, several years. Um, so that maybe I could be of service to to some of you. Um, challenge number one, um, I wanted to call adaptation, um, and this is something that I believe everyone goes through, regardless of the fact whether you're going into consulting or whether you're just adopting lean as a culture and as a methodology and as a philosophy for for business and for life. Um, so adaptation in my in my part was more about adapting the knowledge I had gathered in the banking sector and um, deep diving into manufacturing and logistics and some other sectors like the educational sector as well. Um, and this adaptation was, was very deep, if I must say, um, very, a lot of new things. Um, I was used to working more in services, uh, more in the material information flow of documentation and not so much uh, getting my hands dirty. So adaptation, you have to adapt to, to new projects. You have to adapt to a new way of looking at things. Um, you discover new ways of seeing waste because the waste you will see in a corporate structure are very different from the waste you will see in a manufacturing structure. Um, and also uh, other adaptations, following other people's rules to making your own rules. So. When I, was, when I was an employee, I had some guidelines. I knew what to do. Um, I had external support from consultants. They would um, always hold your hand. And as being a young consultant, um, I also had help from, from our institute, from our colleagues. But you get to make your own decisions. You get to make your own rules. Um, you get to adapt to the customer needs. And this flexibility is really something that, that inspires me very much. And I've always um, been a little bit more of a um, thinking outside of the box person. And um, I want to be able to have this flexibility. So different structures, different company structures, um, from a very strict hierarchical structure to much more dynamic, much more fluid and network-based structures and cultures also. Um, here in the Lean Institute Bulgaria, we work with um, companies that are local, we work with companies that are foreign, um, we, we work with companies that are small in size, uh, from 50 to 60 people, we work with companies that are large in size, um, from a thousand plus people. So all of these parameters that change also mean that we need to change. Um, another adaptation, sometimes you need to downgrade your closet. Uh, what do I mean? Um, when we go with uh, heavy suits um, to a local company, sometimes we've seen that this, this makes them frightened. Um, this raises their expectations too high and um, they're more reluctant to working with us. So sometimes we need to downgrade. We need to be more, uh, more casual. We need to work with the people and be a part of the, the process. Especially in manufacturing, that's what I found. Um, and I even have customers that um, have told us, you know, um, we know that consultants are very strict. Um, you come with the tie and the suit, but please, when you come to the first meeting, um, maybe put a polo shirt, um, short sleeves. They're not used to seeing people. They will get stressed. Um, they think it's an audit. So this type of adaptations, um, especially for me, a person who was um, around five years in the financial sector and had to be very strict, um, in the beginning, it was strange. In the beginning, I felt um, outside of my comfort zone. Um, but then when you work with the people, you stop noticing this because you start focusing more on the human needs and um, the, the business needs. So adaptation would be my first challenge. And I believe this is the first challenge of everyone you will work with. Um, having to adapt to the things you will explain to them, to the things you will show them. Having to adapt to... Um, a new truth, if I may say, because lean opens up your eyes. It opens up your eyes to, to many things that you haven't seen up until now. Um, opening up employees' eyes to seeing um, different wastes that they never thought about. And um, for them, it was uh, just a normal way of working. So these adaptations for me are always a challenge. Um, even now, after having many projects under, under my belt, 
still, every new company means we need to adapt. And for every new customer, we need to adapt our services as well. Um, and this is part of our approach that I will talk about later. But we need to be constantly adapting to the change around us. So challenge number two, um, I tried to put them in chronological order. Challenge number two, I would say people. People are different. Um, and we are actually working with people. For me, this was the, the biggest selling point of Lean when I, when I started digging into Lean was the focus on people. Because we all know of different methodologies that focus a lot on the process. Um, but for me, always people were very important. Um, connecting to them, having this relationship, helping people develop, and then helping them develop their processes and their establishments. This was me was the, the main reason I chose Lean as my philosophy. Um, the fact that we focus and we work with people and we listen to people and together we get to make much more improvements and innovations with little steps sometimes. But again, little steps over the long run gives us huge improvements. Um, so people are different. We work with different people in the banking sector versus manufacturing sector. Um, I've worked with people who don't know how to spell their names. So when you go and you try to explain lean, you can't be very academic about it. Um, you need to be very, very simple. Um, sometimes we can't use the tools we use. For example, um, my, favorite, my favorite tools, sticky notes. Um, this is the best tool for lean, you know, sticky notes, not any fancy high tech technology. But sometimes when you give sticky notes to people and you say, okay, so write a couple of things about your, yourself, write a couple of things about the industry. Some people are, are reluctant um, and you need to adapt. Again, we come back to adaptation. You need to write a, instead of them. You need to think of other ways. You need to be more interactive. Um, you need to go down to, to their level. Sometimes we meet people that are on a very high level. And when we go with the sticky notes in the beginning, they're, they're very skeptical. They're like, um, but excuse me, here in our company, we use, um, we use Jira, we use um, highly sophisticated uh, technology, we use um, Microsoft Dynamics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we need to prove that sometimes simple is better. Um, I come from an IT background. So something I didn't say, I have an IT background before running into, into Lean. And at the beginning, for me, it was a huge shock. Um, why do we have whiteboards? Why do we have to go uh, with the people and write things and then erase them and write them over and over again? For me, this was a huge shock. I was, I was constantly, constantly resisting and, and I was shouting in my team, um, this is not normal. We are in the 21st century. We need to use high-tech solutions. We have, you know, online Kanban systems, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the truth is that some years later, um, I am against digital Kanban solutions um, and I'm for simple sticky notes and the whiteboard. Because again, the people, because of the interactions. Um, so yeah, people are different. People, we work with people on different levels. As a consultant, what I learned in the, in the early ages is that, early ages, early years, um, we need to be able to talk to executives and operators. And there is a different approach. Sometimes you need to be more influential. Sometimes you need to be more direct. Um, so maybe a little hidden tip, which I haven't provided in the slides, but it's good for everyone to know is as consultants, we need to be very well trained in interpersonal skills. We need to be very well trained in body language and influential skills because we need to be able to influence people and then try to show them that we are providing value. And even though I say people are different, um, I have to say that people are not so different. At the end of the day, people are the most important ingredient, uh, at least for us. And together with them, we can make long lasting changes. I've also seen a different approach from uh, other companies, uh, some competitors we have, where the focus is on making significant innovations and change, regardless of the people involved in projects. 
And then a couple of years later, the clients call us and say, we heard that you do lean. It's a very interesting um, concept. Would you like to talk to us? Would you like to tell us some things? And then surprisingly, we say, but um, excuse me, you've been doing lean for the past five years. We know about this. But what happened? Um, and they said, ah, this was a very nice project. Uh, it ran for uh, six months and, uh, and it finished. So we have to explain that lean is not a project. Lean is, is a way of thinking, is a way of life. It's, it has a start date and it has no end date. Um, and yeah, people are not so different. I have the pleasure, I had the pleasure to travel to, to some countries during my life. Um, I went through the most happy place on paper in Europe, in Copenhagen, to, to India. And, and I must say that people are not so different. And people have the same problems all over the place, all over the world. Um, and Lean gives solutions to these problems. Challenge number three. Ah, oh, my favorite. The entrepreneurial life that a consultant needs to get used to, especially when you get a little bit older um, and go through from young to a little bit more mature when you have some more responsibilities, when you have a wife, when you have a child. Um, we and Vasco uh, know a little bit about this. Vasco, I think, twice knows about this. Um, but for me, again, part of life, part of lean thinking, adaptation. Uh, having a young boy now who is two years old means I need to adapt. I need to be flexible. Um, and... The entrepreneurial life that you get as a consultant, again, is not for everyone, but it's really interesting and really helps you grow uh, spiritually also. And the good things are that you get to build your own standards, your own standard way of working. Um, you have your own guidelines. Um, you create, you choose how and with who to work. Something very important that we do. We, we choose our customers. Um, it's not that we work with everyone because what I've noticed in the years is that lean is for everybody, but not everybody is ready to accept lean and to, to get, um, to get into lean. So sometimes we need to, we need to tell the customer that he has to wait a little bit more. Um, we can show him, um, but we don't want to waste our time because at the same time we might be way willing to work with other customers that are very open-minded and want to really become lean. So a little nugget as well. Um, you get to choose who you work with. And this is very important. And you should pay attention to this because this is one of the success factors. If you choose the right customers, you can do great things. And then this will show you much more um, and give you a broader in their understanding of lean. So other things related to the entrepreneurial life going from a nine to five job to working for happy customers. Again, I mentioned this, um, I work 24 seven. Vasco also works 24 seven. Our colleagues, we work 24 seven, meaning that we're available whenever we want to and whenever we're needed and we are flexible. Um, being a consultant means you need to coach more. You need to lead people more. It's not so much about being good as yourself, being a good expert, being able to solve problems by yourself. It's more about helping people to understand how to solve their problems. And of course, I have to mention um, dealing with COVID. This is something that, again, brings us to adaptation. Um, we had to, in the last year, change our whole business model, the way we work. We had to go online. We had to think of ways of how, how can we do um, shop floor meetings digitally. Um, we, we managed to come up with and uh, realize some tools we, we identified ways of creating digital flip charts. And all of this, again, is an adaptation. Um, and some more challenges. One of the challenges as a young consultant that you don't expect to face is having to juggle with multiple projects. In the beginning, you usually get one to prove yourself, to see if you are good for this, to see if this is your fit. And things there are pretty straightforward, pretty fine. Um, you work with one team, one project, you have a supervisor. And when you become a little bit more senior and you get more projects and you have to run these projects, then things get real. 
Um, we need to be very focused and we need to be able to, to change our minds very quickly um, because in the morning you work with one customer in one area, in the afternoon you work with another customer in another area. And this is very, very hard to do, at least um, in the beginning. Uh, once we create some standard ways of working, then it becomes pretty straightforward. Uh, and one final thought, books are very nice, um, but Gemba is better. Um, we've read, I, I read a lot of interesting books on Lean. Um, everything on paper seems pretty, pretty straightforward. The truth is when you go into the manufacturing, when you go into the plant, when you go into the people, then you understand what the real situation is. So my advice for everyone is, um, yes, read, but get your hands dirty. Go in a Gemba, um, try out, try to work with the machines. Some of our customers um, it surprised us on the first day. They said, would you like to take our um, uh, employee uh, internship exam? Um, do a little bit of fidgeting, make some manufacturing parts. I said, wow, this is a great chance. I've never had this opportunity. You get to see the process from within. So I'll speed up a little bit uh, because I see that we're running out of time. Um, some interesting things, approaching customers. Um, some things that we've accumulated over the years. Um, there's no one fit for all solution. Um, I believe, and um, I think Vasco will support me here that we need, to, we need to listen first to our customers. We need to start from their needs. And then we need to, as consultants, adapt what we can give them in the way that they are ready to, to take it. Um, sometimes we start with more educational packages and then more practical parts. Sometimes we go directly into practicality. And this really depends on the level of awareness of the people. Um, so. We use a situational approach in order to win customers. We never go and say, ah, oh, we have one type of training. Here it is. Um, if you like it, fine. If not, then we can do business. Um, I believe that we can answer any customer need. Uh, we can find solutions to it. And we need to be situational about this. And one of the good things that we always use and has always helped us is showing people um, the value stream and some very quick wastes. If you show people the various stream, they suddenly start thinking outside of their biased zone. And if you show them a little bit of waste and explain how this is impacting them financially, then you get to win more of the top level people. And this, again, will help you um, go into uh, more long term projects. So show, show your customers small benefits very quickly and then work towards the big improvements. And one thing that has always helped me, and this is why I prefer to, to tell you stories, is that creating success stories builds a lot of engagement. And something we always do with our customers is at the end of, the, of a period, let's say, try to become, try to build a short success story, try to film a couple of interviews for them to have and to see in a couple of months and to see the difference because this really opens up their eyes. And some skills for success, some of the things that um, help us on a daily basis um, in terms of lean. Having a positive and a growth mindset is a must. You can't be negative about life and be lean. You have to be positive. You have to have a smile. And you need to understand that if you don't grow, you die. So um, it's, a simple, it's a simple truth in life. You need to grow. You need to work. You need to... You need to move, uh, you need to keep the machine moving, you need to keep you moving. Um, another thing, the, the faster you, you help people to see the waste, the faster they will engage in lean. Um, you don't need to, to be very, again, academic, very high, high level, um, I mean, very complex. You don't need to drop heavy process maps. Just go with them on a Gemba and ask them some questions. Why is this here? Doesn't this give you some safety issues? Um, can't you see that there's a lot of rubbish here? Wouldn't you like to have a cleaner bathroom? I mean, that's the first place we go. Um, I like to go into bathrooms in companies. If I see that they are lean, then I'm happy. Um, if I see that no one cares about it, then I know that there is a problem with the culture. And that leads me to 
always be coaching. We need to always be coaching our customers um, and the people we work for and always be experimenting. You need to always experiment. People are afraid sometimes to make errors. We need to talk with um, upper management, with top management, to give them the freedom to make experiments, to give them the freedom to make uh, mistakes, because we know that through mistakes, they will find much more uh, solutions and much more improvement options. Change management, something we need to handle. And if we do it with empathy, it works very well. And this leads to also problem solving. Problem solving is a skill that we need to practice on a daily basis. And also creating systems and structures that control chaos management. Um, there is a lot of chaotic management still today. This was always a surprise to me um, because I've, I've read the, the big books, the big management books, and still people need simple structures that Lean provides. So I, I know my time is running out. I try to, to fill it in with a lot of information. Um, that's my journey up until now. Um, and I, I hope to continue. I believe this is the right way. Um, I hope these things were interesting. And of course, I'm open to, to questions. Thank you very much, Nicola. Um, we are right on time, actually. Um, I don't see any questions right now, and I'm also a little bit concerned about the timing. But um, what I what I can suggest is uh, you have another session in 30 minutes from now. Sorry, in one hour from now, and I have another one in 30 minutes. So uh, maybe if there are any questions, we can still keep them for the other sessions. And, and also we will leave our contacts. So uh, whoever is interested in understanding a little bit more of what you are sharing uh, might also contact us directly. That, uh, should be fine. I right? see. I see a question from Paul. Oh, okay. Um, how did you find your first customer? That's a that's a funny story, actually. Um, through LinkedIn, they found me. Um, they asked. I was I was really young then. Um, they asked if I was willing to to help. Um, they wanted to experiment. They wanted to try with two people. Um, these two people became a team of four. Uh, and then a team of uh, eight, and then a couple of teams. So sometimes you need to put yourself out there. Uh, I was sharing information on what I was doing in life, and, and sometimes people uh, come to you. So the, you attract what you want in life. Um, I'm a strong believer of that. Uh, and when you, when you really adapt lean thinking, then people will start finding you. And of course, you can always also go and search for them. Um, but yeah, first customer was was from LinkedIn, um, and then a lot of a lot of our customers actually came from from some of the um, the free educational content that we were creating and the free seminars that we were doing in Bulgaria just to raise the awareness of of lean thinking. So again, sometimes you have to give in order to to receive. Sorry, I missed the question by Paul, indeed. There are also some good yeah. comments here. Some people that would like to connect, uh, of course, we'll connect to you uh, with a pleasure. Any anything, any other questions in the chat? Uh, maybe we can spend a minute or so more. Uh, if somebody was too shy. Um, uh, I see from the, from the Dutch Institute, some colleagues recognizing with the, with the clothing topic. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> sometimes you get dirty. Um, I, I've gone to companies where, where the safety factors are really low. Um, you go out, um, you're covered in dust. Um, I tell the people, you know, if we were in another country, maybe you wouldn't be allowed to work, but okay, let's, let's see how we can make it better. Um, and yeah, clothing is a very fun part. Indeed. I also have similar experience in, uh, in the past. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Nico, for sharing your thoughts. Uh, I think uh, it, it was also for me very interesting to hear your perspective on this. And, and also it kind of relates a lot to my experience and how I grew in Lean as well. Probably most of the people that are doing this as a job uh, also uh, feel the same way. Uh, and there is one more question, a quick one that maybe we can answer. Uh, how do you deal with uncertainty? And then we can close, please. Yeah, how we deal with uncertainty. I'm, I'm, I believe the question is 
being as a young consultant and being uncertain. Um, I always found that preparation is key. So if we follow PDCA, um, spend 50% of your time preparing, um, prepare for the customer, prepare for what might come. Um, and always there's another thing that I use. I use the 2080 rule when it, in terms of communication, I speak less than the customer. So I ask a lot of questions, which helps us understand a lot about the customer. And this also shifts the focus on the customer and they get to talk and they get to be uncertain. Um, and this gives you a little bit of more power over the customer. So um, prepare and ask more questions. I think that's, that's more than enough. Thank you. All right, everyone. Uh, have a great rest of the lean day that is coming forward or the lean night that is coming forward. And uh, we'll see you in, uh, in the next session. Thank you. Thank you, let's go.